Tired of trying to collect payments from your clients and even collect revision notes? Visit MixingMusicPodcast.com and check out our sponsor list where you can find FilePass. FilePass is a website that I use every single day to send out mixes to clients. Not only does it block clients from downloading files until the project is paid for, but it plays back full resolution audio files and even has a place for clients to leave revision requests. This website saves me so much hassle and helps me to make so much money. Once again, visit MixingMusicPodcast.com and check out our sponsors list where you can find FilePass. We get a small commission for any purchase made through our sponsor list, so we appreciate your support. One, two, three... Hello and welcome back to the Mixing Music Podcast. I am your host, DK, and unfortunately today, Lou is not with me as he is celebrating his 11th anniversary with his fiance. Congratulations, Lou. Um, everybody spam his DMs and let him know happy 11 years to him and his girl. Um, and uh, yeah, so today it's just me. We're flying solo today. Um, really cool things happened today. And, um, I'm thinking about a lot of things. This last month or so has been pretty, no, I would say like the last couple quarters, the last like half a year has been really great. In some aspects, I was able to get my family back out to California after a long medical thing with my son and, and, uh, wasn't able to get my family out in Utah. So my wife and kids were out in Utah for a while while I lived in LA. They're back now here in LA with me and it's all good. But ever since that happened, my priorities changed. And before I was trying to be the best engineer ever. And now I just want to stay home and be the best dad ever. And, um, just kind of going you know, going through the emotional rounds of it. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about that and some other things that are going on. For example, like I've been, um, I just sold my, my speakers. I was using PMCs for about a year that I bought the IB one S's and, um, in the market. Now I have about, you know, I have a good, I have a good chunk of change that I'm needing to spend on some nice monitors. So I've been on a monitor hunt, Right now, I've like before I go back to ATC. So the ATC forty fives that I originally had, I I sold to Lou in order to buy the PMCs and try them out. Um, went really well. I love the PMCs. Now I'm trying out the Focal Trios, which sound really awesome and great. Um, but I'll probably end up returning these as well um, for personal reasons, uh, including like I really love how they sound from a hi fi aspect. I think the Focal trios are amazing like as a listener if i was just listening to music not as a mixer just listening and consuming music as out of enjoyment i think focals are easily within the top realm of of the first monitors that i would pick as a hi-fi uh, enthusiast um but as a mixer there's just some things that aren't quite fitting my taste um so i'm gonna try one more company before i just give up and go back to atcs and buy the same speakers that i sold to lou originally um, so I'll let you know on that journey and how that's going. Um, the biggest thing for me is the mid-range. So a few different factors. Uh, the whole stereo image is not a big deal to me for some reason. I mean, there's speakers and it's the room and the acoustics. That, I mean, I know that the details I know can be important and change with speakers. But from my experience, the most important things to me is how clean and clear the mid-range is. We're talking about maybe even a little bit emphasized. I mean, I don't mind NS10s. Um, although I'd rather have lower mid-range focused speakers like the ATCs where the focus is a little bit lower um, in the mid-range rather than the NS10s, which are a little bit more higher in the 1 to 3K area focus on the mid-range. I don't mind it being pronounced, but um, I would like a clear mid-range. So that's very important to me. And another thing that's important for my speaker selection is a uh, is uh, the transient response. Um, how quick the low end is, not how deep it gets. I really don't care how deep the low end is. It's more about how quickly the woofer returns to its uh, original position without any sort of wobble or, um, yeah, just how clean that low end is and that top end as well. I need transients to come through true to what is intended. I need to hear the full snap. So in, in monitor world, we call these fast monitors. Um, it's because 
the transients are fast. The speakers are very fast and very precise, so we call them. And and this is where like the upper end of monitors they tend to be all very very fast. Um, so uh, and then the last thing for me is is an interesting one. It's distortion, and this is not the type of distortion that you'd hear in any monitor. Um, it's not like crackling or fizzing. It's more about how authentic is it the sound that's coming out of the speakers true to the source? How much are the speakers literally coloring the, the music that I'm hearing, not because of the frequency curves uh, of the speakers necessarily, but, although that has to do with it a little bit as well, and like the crossovers, but like mostly, again, with the transients. Like how clean are they? Do they grab the transients? Do they, I don't know. There's, there's, it's really hard to say. Um, I would lastly, I would say phase. There's some weird phase thing that I was hearing with the focals as well. Um, really couldn't put my 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 finger on it. And they sound great no matter where in your, that you are in the room. That's kind of the thing that they're known for. But at the same time, even in the proper listening position, I'm tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, and I just cannot get it to sound in phase. Like it's a, it's a very very finicky for some reason. Um, and it's it's a very subtle thing. I don't think it's like it's out of phase. It's it's more like I don't know, like finding the perfect sweet spots is a little bit hard. It feels like the the woofers are just too far away from each other. That's honestly what it feels like. I've tried them in the near near a uh, near field position in the mid range posi- midfield position. It's I'm just struggling to get what I want out of it. But for listening purposes, oh my goodness, sounds amazing. Sounds amazing as a listener. Um, just not accurate for mixing for my taste um, for what I'm wanting. Um, but yeah, anyway, that was a, a, a nice tangent that I thought was interesting. What monitors are you using? And um, are you looking for new monitoring setup? What headphones are you using? Is there any headphones that you recommend? If you want to get in the conversation and talk about this, come join our Discord. You can go to mixingmusicpodcast.com. Join our Discord um, where we talk about all of this stuff. Um, I'm on Twitch and I announce when I'm going live. I do a lot of live mixing on Twitch. Um, if you want to see me work and learn live, um, instead of where you can actually ask questions in the middle of the stream rather than um, in the comment section of the YouTube video, so it's a little bit more interactive there. Um, I do those Friday mornings and other times during the week at random times, and you always get announcements through the Discord. So yeah, go to mixedmusicpodcast.com to join that. Um, otherwise, let's see what else is going on recently. Um, I wanted to talk uh, briefly. Um, a little bit of brainstorming, and and last week we had a. It wasn't my favorite episode to record. I think it was a good episode, but um, about finding the right information today, I actually wanted to briefly go over um, YouTube channels that I personally love and trust. And I'm going to kind of go off the top of my head here, but one of them is a nice classic one. If you want to learn about Pro Tools and dive into Pro Tools because you're ready to jump into a higher level commercial commercial grade. And what I mean by that is going around to different studios as a freelance tracking engineer, um, then you'll need to learn how to use Pro Tools. Uh, Yeah, so what's a great way to learn? Well, first off, kind of struggling through it. That's very important. Googling everything and struggling through it and learning learning the problems, like going in, getting into problems and solving them through Google is a great way to learn. And that's really the only way to get better. But there is a channel called Produce Like a Pro with Warren Hewitt. Warren is uh, has been a guest on the podcast on a couple episodes, and he has a playlist um, called uh, Introduction to Pro Tools or something like that. If you go to his playlist tab on his YouTube channel, it's a really solid playlist of 15 to 30 minute videos, and there's a bunch of videos, and it goes through all the from basic functions of Pro Tools to uh, more more in depth tutorials of, of how to use more advanced skill tutorials on how to use t- uh, Pro Tools. Really, really great for that. Um, and I recommend that to any interns or anybody that's trying to learn Pro Tools. Go check out that playlist from Produce Like a Pro. Uh, Warren Hewitt in general is a little bit more of an old school cat. Um, and uh, uh, But at the same time, I think that his videos are great. He's very thoughtful in his in everything. So when he talks about monitors and he talks about different equipment, he's very thoughtful and not so much decisive and and he kind of leaves it more open and it more does commentary than than an actual opinion and and I like that because it's not super biased. He's not um super strongly opinionated and he's also got really great techniques. He's got great credits and the dude is wonderful. 
Um, so I recommend you check out Produce Like a Pro. He's always interviewing. It's really fun, too, because he's always going around to different studios, doing studio tours, and you meet other people that are involved in the industry. Um, so this is just a really great channel to check out. And it's really reliable, I think, especially if you're like a rock dude. Um, I think he has credits with The Fray and Aerosmith. Really great guy, Warren Hewitt. Um, another person, another channel, uh, the classic Pensado, right? Pensado's place. Um, if you don't know, Dave Pensado is a world renowned mix engineer. Um, he got his start in LA many decades ago and, um, he helped Jason Joshua get his start. Dave Pensado is a legend. Um, and him and his manager, Herb, run a show called Pensado's Place where they interview various producers and engineers. They also have a section, a segment of the show called, um, into the layer, which Dave talks about new plugins or techniques that he's uh, that he recommends or he's discovered because he's always learning. It's very interesting to and there's and there's years and years worth of content. We're talking like I'm pretty sure there's like a decade worth of content. There's another YouTube channel called like uh, Pensado's Place Archive of like eight year old plus uh, Pensado's Place episodes. I really recommend them if, and. Uh, really recommend listening to the, I think listening to interviews of other engineers is a really great place to learn um, about uh, more than just things that like, more than just like mixing tips, but rather where is their head? What are they thinking? Uh, Dave and Herb does a really good job kind of getting the engineers and producers to spill their secrets. And I really recommend that. Um, that's where the whole magic of the mid-range with uh, Jack Joseph Puig came out um, that uh, another YouTube channel made famous. Um, uh, he actually, I actually tried the Focal Trios because of him. Uh, let me pull it up right now. He has an episode called Magic. Uh, the magic is in the mid-range. And he referenced the Jack Joseph Puig episode. Um, it is Colt Caparoon on, uh, on YouTube. He's got a lot of awesome videos as well. Uh, I'm not, he's a Nashville cat. I'm not quite sure what his credits are necessarily, but he's got very good looking videos. They look great. I don't know if that's a red herring, but, um, from what I can tell, he's got some decent stuff. Let's talk about another one. One of my favorites of all time is Kush Audio. Kush Audio has, uh, uh, had a podcast that they were doing, the UBK Happy Time Hour, I believe it was called. Um, and Kush Audio on YouTube is really great. After Hours... Um, Kush is so, so solid and just makes you think not all of his stuff is super applicable for every genre and every part of the world, but, uh, really solid information, really well thought through, very intelligent, well-spoken man. Um, really like that show and highly recommend, uh, Kush Audio and their plugins, to be honest, really great plugin company. Um, another one that I really like is, uh, for some reason, there's a new one that I extremely enjoy called Present Day Production. It's only been around for about a year, and they're hilarious. It's it's a it's a mastering mixing mastering engineer, an engineer out in UK, and I think like an assistant or an intern or something. And the, together they make a bunch of videos. Present Day Productions. They're hilarious, and it's I recommend. They're very intelligent, well spoken. Um, he gets very technical as well. So not only are they funny, but you can actually learn a lot about the technical stuff, even with things that you wouldn't even think. Like if it's titled something that you wouldn't think about. Like one of the episodes, they talked about converters and they compared the audience converter versus a, the SSL converter, both like within the same range of price. And they printed music through it 500 times. So you can hear the difference in conversion five. 500 times over and it's ridiculous and it's amazing. It's so interesting. And he talked about, um, in one of the speakers, speaker videos, he talked about how fast it is and kind of explained better than I did what, what it means to have a fast speaker, um, all over the board, really great, really fun. Did the ultimate 1176 shootout, a lot of cool videos, um, really recommend them. That's, that's one of those that I love. Uh, yeah. So, uh, recommend that. Uh, let's talk about Mix with the Masters. I mean, that's a classic one. Mix with the Masters is really great. It's kind of within the realm of Pensado's place. Uh, you get to talk about or learn from uh, Grammy Award winning engineers, which is not very common. Like it's it's a rare, very, very amazing thing to kind of get through. So I really, really recommend uh, Mix with the Masters. I have a yearly subscription with them for their internal videos as well. 
Um, really, really love their stuff. Sonic Scoop is another one. I love Sonic Scoop. Um, what is it, Joe Coletti? I need to get him onto the show. I really, really need to get him onto the show. I, I need to reach out. In fact, I did reach out, and he said to email him, and I never did, and I'm, I'm a lazy butt. So uh, I need to reach out to him. Hopefully, we'll have him on the show soon. Uh, really cool page. Uh, Sonic Scoop kind of does the same sort of format that we do. Um, they do like a podcast thing and a YouTube channel. Uh, it's 10 to 20 minutes long. Ours is more like ranting, natural. He's, his is kind of a little bit more like scripted, but it's the same sort of um, material, same sort of style and, and um, kind of like uh, uh, the length of it and everything. So I really re- recommend checking that out. If you like our stuff, then you would like uh, Sonic Scoop. Um, very similar and great range of topics from them as well. I think he himself is a mastering engineer, but he talks a lot about mixing. Yeah. Um, Recording Revolution is an old one, but a goodie. Uh, Really great with Graham Cochran. Uh, Really recommend that one. I love that one a lot too. Um, Those are kind of the ones that I recommend the most. There's a lot that I watch for like gear reviews that aren't really something that's more about technique um, that I like. For example, like uh, Mixbus TV is pretty dope. Like I'm on the, I'm on the fence with him. Like I really like his stuff and I watch a lot of his videos. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I, th- I need to get him on the show too. Um, he's a really cool dude and he's doing a really great job with his marketing. So congrats to him. Uh, Spectre Sound Studio is hilarious. Uh, I'm on the fence with him too. Maybe it's because it's like a genre gap, but, uh, yeah, no, th- those are both reliable people. And uh, Mixbus TV, I like his gear reviews a lot, actually. I think he has some of the best uh, gear reviews, um, in my opinion. Yeah, and then, uh, obviously, um, White Sea Studios is a relatively newer one as well. That He reviews a lot of plugins. And uh, last one, this is a new one. This is very interesting. And, and I don't think that everything he says is factual. In fact, I'd be very weary with what he says. But a very interesting channel that might be interesting to check out because he's very, very analytical with plugin demonstrations and he uses a, an, an app called Plugin Doctor and he really breaks down the behind the scenes of a plugin and what it's really doing. Um, I don't think all of his stuff is really accurate. In fact, I've come across a couple of his videos which are just wrong, uh, like disinformation, not, or not disinformation, just, just not correct information. Uh, but a very interesting nonetheless is uh, Paul Third. He's like an Irish dude. Um, he, uh, let me let me try Paul Third, Paul Third. No, I, that, I butchered that. That's yeah, that's how he introduced himself. Really cool guy. Shout out to him. I like his videos. Very interesting. Yeah, production ep- expert, Sweetwater, all over the place. What else? Those are the kind of the ones that I love all the time, watch all the time, and uh, really recommend that you check out as well. Um, and as well as DK Mixes, my YouTube channel. Um is probably the smallest out of all the ones that I just named. But I highly recommend uh, checking out uh, DK Mixes. I have all of my past live streams stay online. Um, And uh, you can find the YouTube channel at mixingmusicpodcast.com. It's right there on the front page, just a link to YouTube. Um, Yeah, all my past live streams are on there. I have all the podcasts, well, most of the podcast episodes on there. I need to be a lot better about it. yeah, so there's information there. I also have access to courses as well. We have a lot of free PDFs and whatnot to help y'all. Uh, it's all available at MixingMusicPodcast.com. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Uh, thank you so much to Isotope. We, Me and Lou, we love Isotope, and I think everybody that we've interviewed on the show uses Isotope, and I highly recommend them. Just buy it once. Forget. I know it's a little bit expensive. Maybe you can catch it for the Black Friday, Cyber Monday kind of sale Um, but if you want, instead of doing a seven day trial demo trial, um, and you want to extend that trial period to 30 days, a whole month for free, go to mixing, uh, isotope.com backslash MM podcast. That's one more time. That's isotope.com backslash MM podcast. Um, you can also get 10% off any full purchases. Uh, there may be better deals, um, online through their website because of cyber Monday. But other than that, uh, if you need 10% off on Isotope, we always have that going on. 
um, on that website there. So thank you so much for sponsoring. If you're looking for gear, we have a list on Amazon. I have a bunch of other companies on mixingmusicpodcast.com. Under the Sponsors tab, I have a lot of really cool different companies that I work with. Um, and anytime anybody uses anything or purchases anything uh, from those links on the website directly, I make a little. we make a little bit of money off of it, and you're helping support our channel here and support our... Uh, support the uh, the content that we're making. Uh, lastly, today I had a really interesting thought, something that I've been struggling with, and I just want to be open about it because part of this podcast, the reason why we started was to kind of be a digital journal for myself. But today I had a really good opportunity because it was Lou's anniversary. Um, he, Keisha Cole wanted to book the studio and he was out. She originally asked him, but he was had an anniversary dinner planned, so he threw me in the room. So it was my first time working officially with uh, with Keisha Cole, and um, it made me think. And and this is me just thinking. I'm not ranting. I don't really have an opinion. It's just thoughts. And 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 I, I'm going to preface this, which is a lot of this comes from an entitled place, and the reason why I'm going to. I'm going to preface this as well as like, um, I know that some things that I might say might sound really entitled and selfish and stupid. Um, but this is just a form of me thinking. So I may sound stupid. I might recognize that I sound stupid and, and I just want to talk it out a little bit. But, um, recently, especially in the last, ever since my family came out, I've been struggling really hard with anxiety for tracking and, I'm a really good tracking engineer. In fact, so good that Keisha asked me to come back tomorrow as well. Um, and I'm a little bit torn about it because I'm grateful for that. And it's really good for my career and great for my credits list and whatever. But I don't know. I've just come to a point in my life where the uncertainty of tracking is just really, really anxiety like causes a lot of anxiety for me and it's bad because I need to track I've preached it all the time tracking is how you get into bigger rooms how you meet better clients um and really gets you into the door for mixing if you try to start off mixing like I've, I've talked about this a lot in different episodes and I'm relatively new to LA I need to be working with bigger clientele and and building these credits lists there but I'm at a point in my life right now where I love my job and I love doing music, but I love being a dad more. And I'm just not, it causes me a lot of stress when I know that I have to sacrifice family time in order to record with someone. I'm, I'm just not in the, I'm not in the market for being someone's personal engineer. I mean, that, and that's how that works. I mean, a lot of these big cats, um, was someone's was either interned for someone up in the, on the in the upper leagues it's very rare that someone like me who has not really interned with anybody that just came up organically like that i am a very rare person um in that's a very rare scenario most people that are in the higher leagues and and this is there's a difference there's a difference between being able to support yourself and go full time versus having bigger name clients and there is a difference there so you can go full time in music and and be able to support your family with a career in music without ever having any Grammy award winning or gold record placements. Yeah, I mean it's kind of inevitable if you stay in the scene long enough. Um, and but at the same time, like uh, it, there is a difference there, and you'll see a lot of people with consistently large credits that work with bigger artists in the mixing, tracking, mastering, whatever. <clears throat> they either interned with someone, a uh, bigger studio or bigger engineer. Um, and eventually worked so hard for so long, gave everything that they had that um, they started returning the studio or the, the engineer return, started returning the favor after a few years and they started getting their clientele. Um, yeah, and uh, that that's one way. Another way that you see it is eventually having someone track and then become someone's personal engineer. That's a pretty common thing to see as well um, within the realms. That's within the realms of like TZO, for example, uh, Chris Brown's engineer, uh, worked at another studio and cut his teeth at another studio as an intern and, and, and all that jazz. But he became, he really started blasting off his career and he helped work on Lil Nas X's stuff and more beyond Chris Brown. Um, 
because because he was working so much with Chris Brown to kind of build that credit built that credibility. So becoming someone's personal engineer is is a very good way to kind of meet other people and climb the ladder, and you know eventually you'll graduate from that person maybe. Um, but this is the one thing that's going to sound really entitled because I know a lot of people would love to be in my shoes. I would love to mix for Keisha, and I would love to work with her on that level. But it comes back down to I just don't love tracking anymore, and it's unfortunate that I'm so damn good at it. <laughs> that that like you know I keep having return clients and they keep wanting me I'm I'm in relatively high demand I really don't go out of my way to look for tracking gigs um and if I wanted to I could do much better financially if I took all the ones that I was offered uh but I'm just really out of love with tracking and it's really unfortunate and I'm in a I'm in a weird point in my life where I feel entitled and I'm trying to cultivate more gratitude and I'm just struggling a lot emotionally. And I'm sure that many other people listening has kind of gone through their ups and downs. And it's really interesting because I feel like from a family perspective, I'm on a super up. I'm spending lots of time with them. I'm hanging out with them. But in a career perspective, I'm I'm feeling a big down right now as far as like motivation, as far as, um, just the desire, like I don't really want to be a big engineer. That's just not a priority at the moment, and and I don't. I'm not. I'm not quite sure what to think because it always was. It always has been, and I'm really hoping that I start coming back around to it. I'm. I'm really hoping. There's a really bad way to do this, but I'm really trying to find. It comes back into the coming back to the monitors, right? I'm really trying to find a set of monitors that really gets me excited again. That helps me to really be able to push the envelope in, in, in mixing and what I love to do. And, uh, I've been in and out of love with mixing. I, I, I think I've mentioned this in the past when I did over a thousand mixes in 2020 throughout the year of 2020, it really crushed my soul. And it really, that was way too much. It was way too much. I overworked. I didn't see my family and <sighs> I have a lot of regret from that. Um, And I don't ever want to regret not ever spending enough time with my family. But I'm also torn with I don't ever want to regret shooting for the stars in, with my career and, I, and being the guy that said I could have made it, I could have made it. I feel like I either want two things or I want none of it. And I'm I'm struggling with that. And... uh I don't know if there's anything that y'all can learn from this, but I'm sure that some of y'all have felt this in the past too, and I'm just trying to be honest. Um, I'm really grateful for anybody that's been listening to the show and his fans and has reached out um, either on the DMs or on Discord or on YouTube or wherever. Um, I really, really appreciate that. Um I want to recap a story that one of my professors said. I think I've mentioned this on an older episode, but I think it's okay to repeat it because it's been a while. Um, But one of my professors in college, he told us a story about how he emailed Han, or no, he sent Hans Zimmer a Facebook message. It wasn't a friend with Hans Zimmer, but just a, a Facebook message about a score on a movie that he did. And my professor just reached out to him. He doesn't know Hans Zimmer at all. And he's just hes just someone that he really looks up to Hans Zimmer. And uh, wasn't expecting a reply, but he said something along the lines of, oh, this score in this film was a true stroke of genius. I really believe that you were very inspired. And it was just absolutely beautiful. Congratulations. Or something along that line. Short and sweet. And he wasn't expecting a reply. He just anonymously, basically just, I know you don't know me, but I just want to really want to let you know that you're doing a really good job and I support your work. And Hans Zimmer replied back and he said, thank you. Um, uh, we all get a little insecure at times. So I really, really appreciate it. And when I heard this story, it made me think about how I can be a better host of this show 
and become a better leader and take more responsibility for the community that I've accidentally created. <laughs> um, but at the same time, like, I want to thank everybody who's, who's been along for the journey. Um, and I'm really expecting to do a lot more. I'm still trying to figure out ways to ramp up productions, but my life is a mess and I'm just, I'm just trying to take baby steps. And we've seen a lot of progress in the last two years. I'm hoping to see a lot more in the next two and the next forever. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you as, as we kind of pass our American Thanksgiving. I just want to say thank you for all of you, um, for listening, for being a part of the journey, for supporting me and my family, for supporting Lou the studio. Um, we've, we've had a few interns that have come because of the podcast and the YouTube videos. Um, really grateful for all of the support truly like so much love has come from y'all from a little nobody like me who is just really really passionate exciting excited about audio and and mixing I'm really grateful that y'all have believed in me and and i'm really really grateful that this has become something that i've been able to do as a service I know that it's free time that I'm giving away and I'm giving all these information, all this information and secrets and this curation of knowledge away for free. Um, but to me, I don't see it that way. Honestly, I see it as a way of, of y'all are being kind and listening to me. <laughs> um, respect me enough to listen to me. That's, that's quite humbling to, to think about. And I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, I'm going to work on gratitude this month for the next few months, for the rest of my life. And I think my issue is now that I've been thinking out loud, I think my issue is gratitude to be thankful for what I have um, and to come from a place of, of feeling lucky, feeling lucky that I'm here, that I'm able to do this, that I'm able to balance my family and a job. I'm very lucky. I'm very blessed. And the fact that I'm able to do music as a career to begin with, I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, America is one of the few countries where that's even a feasible thing as a career. It's, it's, it's unfathomable how, how blessed I am. And it's, it's also disturbing of how much, how entitled I am with it. And, and I'm aware enough to see it, but I'm, 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 I'm becoming better. I'm working on myself. I'm working on myself. And, uh, yeah, what a weird episode, just a grab bag of stuff. I'm, I just finished up that session, so I was feeling a little bit, uh, a little anxious and I knew that I still needed to get this podcast episode done. So yeah, I was going to talk about YouTube videos with Lou and, uh, then and we were going to do it. The whole Keisha session threw us off. We were planning on recording an episode together. So, yeah. Happy mixing, my friends. Please be happy. Please stay happy. You've got a friend in me. <laughs> that was so late. <laughs> that was so corny to say. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to delete. No, I'm not going to delete that. Uh, but I appreciate you all being friends with me, uh, hanging out with me uh, digitally as well as in person for a few of you. I'm really excited to see all of y'all at the next NAM or AES, whatever convention is next. As soon as COVID is over, there seems to be there's another strain that's making its way across America right now, across the world right now. I'm really hoping that I can see some of y'all in person. Um, I've met a lot of y'all in person in California out here in the Los Angeles area, um, but I'm hoping to meet a lot more at NAM or AES or the next convention that we're all able to go to. Um, so looking forward to seeing all y'all. Happy mixing, my friends, and stay saucy. One, two, three. Yeah. Are you looking for more in-depth tutorials or even access to stems to practice on? Visit links.dkmixes.com to find our online course selection.